Go with me to the word of the Lord, 1 Samuel chapter number 3. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter number 3, we're going to begin reading verse number 4. But the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called thee not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be if he call thee that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Amen. I want us to pray this morning. I want the church to pray with me today. Holy God, we love you and we thank you for the privilege that we have to be in the house of the Lord. I'm asking you this morning, Lord, that there would be a great and mighty anointing in this place that would break every yoke, that would loose every shackle, God, that would open every prison door, that would open the mind of every understanding, that would remove the scales from every eye, that would unstop every ear, that they could hear this morning what the Spirit of God has to say in this place. I pray that every heart would be open and receptive to what you want to do in this place. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord, God, would sweep over this house and minister to every life, God. And Lord, I pray that all of us this morning would be changed and transformed by your Word and by your Spirit, God. Lord, we don't want to leave this place the same way that we came. We don't have time to waste and going through the motions of religion, but God, We've got to develop a relationship with you that's going to get us out of this world, Lord. I'm praying in this house, God, that we would hear your voice speaking clearly to us today. And we say it in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated if you'd like to be. I believe this morning that we are standing in a moment of time where there's about to be a shaking like never before. Haggai chapter number 2 verses 6 and 7 says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Every time you turn the news on, all you see is trouble, chaos, and problems. There's trouble in politics. We're standing in a moment where there's about to be a presidential election and we're seeing things like we've never seen before. This is probably the most chaotic election that I've ever witnessed in my 41 years of being on the face of this earth. And there's probably more riding on the outcome of this election than there's ever been. If the United States of America don't get this election right, we're in trouble. And we're in trouble like never before. Moral character is at an all-time low. We're living in an hour when men call evil good and good evil. We're living in a day where there's an attack against everything that is associated with God. We're living in an hour when the Supreme Court says that marriage between a man and a man and a woman and a woman is okay when the Word of God clearly states that it's not. We're living in an hour when parents, even though they have a birth certificate from the hospital saying that they had a boy or they had a girl, 
don't even know if they should tell their child if they're a boy or a girl because they don't even know there's confusion in the identity of gender. I saw a post the other day said Kennedy put a man on the moon and Obama a man in the women's restroom. That's the hour that we're living in. And this nation thinks that God is going to continue to turn its eye away and just ignore what's going on. I have news for you this morning. That's not going to happen. As a matter of fact, the only reason why judgment has not failed on the United States of America so far is because we're serving a very merciful and a very patient and kind God. But there's going to come an hour when God's going to say enough is enough. There's going to come an hour when God's going to say, I've given you ample time and ample place to repent, but if you refuse to repent, I have no choice but to send the judgment of God upon this nation. Hallelujah. If you watch the news, all you see is hatred and violence and evil. We're living in an hour where people hate each other just because there's a different color on their skin. God's not going to continue to turn his eye around and ignore what's going on in our nation. We're living in an hour when there's murder that's running rampant. We're living in an hour when every time you turn on the news, there's earthquakes and tornadoes, there's landslides and fires and hurricanes, and even nature itself is groaning in the spirit that is covering the face of the earth nature has more sense than much of humanity in this hour because nature is trying to tell this nation you need to wake up I don't know if some of you seen some of the posts that is coming across Facebook but uh, they're talking about Hurricane Matthew and it hit land on 10-7 and I'm sure that many of you saw what Matthew 10-7 said that there's an announcement that the kingdom of God is coming. Nature's announcing the kingdom of God is coming. You say, well, that's just coincidence. You call it what you want to. But I believe that this world is vastly and quickly approaching the coming of the Lord. I believe that we're quickly approaching an hour when the Lord is going to say, okay, enough is enough, ready or not, here I come. I believe that we're living in an hour when the Spirit of the Lord is fed up and sick. As a matter of fact, the Word of the Lord says that the Spirit of God will not always strive and wrestle with man. How many times do people think the Spirit of God is going to call them and call them and call them and they push Him away? God is doing everything that He can in this hour to send last day. Holy Ghost revival. The Word of the Lord declares that in the last days I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh but God can pour it out but it's up to man to receive it and if you won't receive the mercy of God that is reaching for you and calling you into the kingdom of God to accept his grace and his deliverance then the only thing that's left to come is the spirit of judgment upon this generation but I've come to preach to this church this morning about the call there's a call of God that's going forth in the spirit the voice of the Holy Ghost is crying out in this hour and it's reaching to a generation that says you better get ready you better get ready you better quit playing games with God you better quit ignoring the voice of God you better perk your ears up to the voice of the preacher that's calling your name and saying get your heart right At this very moment, there's tension around the globe and all it would take is one small move by one particular government and we would be thrust into a nuclear war, War Three. I don't know if you're paying attention, but Russia's on edge. China's on edge. North Korea's on edge. And the United States is on edge. And all it would take is one leader to make a mistake and the world that you're so comfortable in, the world that you feel so safe in, in a moment's time, Time. Cities could be wiped off the map. Countries could be wiped off the map. I'm telling you, if you've ever heard the voice of God speaking to you in this hour, you better wake up and listen. And with all of this happening, the world is facing the greatest event, event that it's ever known. 
Because at every, any given moment, the event that the Bible calls the great and terrible day of the Lord is going to be at hand. I'm talking this morning about the rapture of the church. Oh, what a glorious day it's going to be for those that are ready. But for those that have pushed God away, for those that have heard sermon after sermon and sat on apostolic pews and said, I've got plenty of time to get it right. I'll get it right next week, preacher. I'll get it right next service, preacher. I've got, there's going to be a day I'm going to live for God someday. But one of these days, if you don't hurry up and get it right, I said, if you don't hurry up and get it right, time is running out on you, sir. Time is running out on you, ma'am. And at any given moment, the trumpet of God is going to sound and you're going to be left behind in this world. And if you think this world is in trouble now, you wait until the bride of Christ is taken out of this world. You wait until the only force that's holding hell back is taken out of this world. You wait until the only thing that's holding the Antichrist back is taken out of this world. And if you think there's trouble now, there's going to be trouble like you've never seen before in your life. And there's going to be something in your spirit that's going to cry out to God. But it's going to be too late then. Matthew chapter number 23, verse number 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and deceive many. And you shall hear, listen to what the Lord said was going to be the sign of His coming. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. This nation's been in war for the past ten years. We haven't even gotten out of war. It's from one war to the other. And if we're not in war, they're talking about it. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. Now, he's saying that to the church. But if you ain't in the church, you better be troubled. For all of these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. Now, if you want to know what's going on in the news, you don't even have to read. You don't even have to listen to the news. Just go to Matthew chapter 24. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences earthquakes in divers places that means there's going to be earthquakes in places that you don't normally have earthquakes when I was a kid you never heard of an earthquake now they're having earthquakes in North Mississippi and places that they've never had an earthquake You say, you're trying to scare me today, preacher? No, I'm trying to wake you up. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make you realize that you don't have forever, that this thing is almost finished. All of these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You say, well, that's not happening. Well, it's not in America yet, but you just look at the news. Every, everywhere you turn, there's... This Christian group over here is being killed and persecuted in Africa and Somalia. And this group over here of Christians is being killed over in Iran. And this group over here is happening, folks. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I just, I just preached Wednesday night about Jesus' name. You... you you can be any religion you want to in the world and they don't have any problem with it, but you start speaking the name of Jesus. You see, we're living in an hour when this thing is being turned around and no longer is the church a good thing. We're, we're wicked in the eyes of the world that we're living in. We're a bunch of judgmental, hateful, racist, and that's not at all what the church is. 
The church is the thing that's trying to be helpful and beneficial to this world. But we're living in an hour when men call evil good and good evil. It's okay if you're a whoremongering, alcoholic, dope head. It's okay if you're all of those things, you're accepted by the world. But if, if you stand for morality and right and you're a Christian, you're a wicked person. And you think God's just going to keep turning His face away from that? And then shall many be offended. Listen to it. I'm telling you the, where we're at right now. Many shall be offended. Every time you turn around, somebody's being offended. The government's having to pass laws because something offended somebody. And shall betray one another. We're living in an hour where people don't know who to trust. Because every time you turn around, somebody's betraying. And they shall hate one another. There's more hatred in the world today than has ever been before. People hate each other because they're a different color. They hate each other because they're a different social class. They hate each other because they're a different denomination and religion. They hate each Just hate. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Say, Brother Irby, has that happened? Yes, it has. When Brother Lee Stone King stood before the United Nations last year, he preached the gospel of Jesus' name, repentance. Baptism in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And in one moment's time, that scripture was fulfilled and every nation and every tribe and every tongue on the earth heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now every moment that we're living in is just the grace and mercy of God giving this generation a one more chance. In the book of Revelation, seven times, the Lord says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. It amazes me that we're living in a generation that you can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can preach that the judgment of God is coming. You can preach that God is a merciful God for those that are willing to repent. And it's like they can't hear. As a matter of fact, the word of the Lord's talking about the idols that are worshipped in this generation. And it says they have eyes that see not, and ears that hear not, and mouths that speak not. And then the Bible says, so are they that worship them. And we're living in a generation where there's idols everywhere. People are too busy to make it to the house of God, but they were at the football game Saturday night. Why? Because they have an idol. They can't make it to the house of God, but they can make it to the woods or to the golf course. And I'm not preaching that any of that is sin unless it becomes between you and God. When you're missing the house of God to go do something that's not necessary, you've got a problem. When you don't have time to pray, but you've got time to play, you've got a problem. When you come into the house of God and you can't worship, but you can lose your voice at some kind of secular ball game somewhere because somebody scored a touchdown, you've got a problem. I'm just trying to help us this morning because 
ready or not, sooner or later, we're going to, just like when we were children and we used to play that game hide and seek and the person that was doing the seeking would close his eyes for a little while and he would begin to count and then all of a sudden he'd say, ready or not, here I come. Let me tell you something. God's been closing his eyes for a little while and he's been counting the days down but there's coming very soon upon this generation an hour when he's going to say, ready or not, here I come and then there's going to be a trumpet that's going to sound and the Bible says in the moment and in the twinkling of an eye the trump's going to sound and the church is going to be taken out and at that moment if you're not ready you're not going to have time to run to the church in that moment if you're not ready you're not going to have time to repent you're not going to have time to say God I'm sorry if you wasn't already ready when that moment happens you're going to be left behind you're going to be left here then what are you going to do? So many people in this world have intentions of living for God and doing right someday, but there's this thing over here that they're trying to hold on to and they won't turn loose. Uh, they think this is so important and this thing is so much fun that I can't live for God. I hope that thing means a lot to you because if you miss heaven over anything in this world, you're out of your mind because the Bible says if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul, what has it profited him? If you miss heaven, the only thing left is hell hey, brother Irby you sure are stirred this morning you bet I am you bet I am because eternity in hell is a serious matter and why in the world would you want to go to hell when there's heaven The thing that is greater than anything in this world. People reach for money and finances and houses and big homes and fine cars. And the best thing that you can have in this world, God's prepared much better for you in heaven. But for a temporary good time, you're going to miss it. I'm going to get it right one day. I wonder how many people are going to go to hell because time ran out on their good intentions. And if it's not the trumpet that sounds, I wonder how many people woke up one morning and thought they had plenty of time only to find themselves in some kind of accident that didn't allow them to see the stroke of midnight that night. Everything from a car accident to being shot in some kind of situation to a sudden heart attack that you didn't even know you had health problems with or a stroke. Folks, if you don't pay attention, you can go to the graveyard and there's every age from newborn to over a hundred and everything in between. And there's many of people in that graveyard that didn't wake up the morning that they died and said, well, I know this is probably going to be my last day. I'm going to get it right. No, it was business as usual. It was getting up that morning, getting so busy to go about their day that they got stuck in their daily routine. They were on their job. They were taking care of their children. They were doing what they did every day with no mind or knowledge of God in that day. not knowing that eternity was coming knocking on their door that day. You see what's scary about this generation is this generation is just like the generation of Noah. For over a hundred years, Noah preached that the judgment of God was coming. Noah preached that there's going to come a rain on the earth and there's going to come a flood and it's going to destroy all of creation. And you know what? I've got a feeling, Brother Adcock, that when Noah first began to preach that, that there was a group 
that, that kind of hung around the building place of the ark and hung in real close and listened to the voice of Noah. And maybe there's even some of them that for a little while they were so convinced that they helped Noah build on the ark and, and they hammered some nails and they cut down some trees. But as time rolled along and as the clouds didn't gather and as the rain didn't fall, the crowd began to thin down because uh, Noah, you're just another crazy kook on the face of the earth that's preaching some crazy thing that nobody's ever even heard of and you're out of your mind Noah just like people are saying in this generation you're talking about the rapture of the church what do you mean the rapture of the church we ain't never seen anything like that that's never happened before and after all y'all been preaching thousands of years about the coming of the Lord you know what that means that means we're thousands of years closer to the coming of the Lord than we've ever been before and sooner or later there's going to come a day just like it was in Noah's day the Bible says that Noah didn't shut the door God called Noah into that ark and God shut the door and when God shuts the door it don't matter if you're on the outside screaming to get in or not it's too late and there's going to be an hour when the trumpet's going to sound and the church is going to rise and at that moment every church is going to be full but it'll be to no avail because the door shut So many people are caught up in the music of this world. The beat of the spirit of this world. That they can't even hear the voice of God that's calling them today. We're right where Noah was. In his generation. The Bible says as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. For the Bible says in the days of Noah they were eating and drinking. They were marrying and giving in marriage. They were caught up in life. They were so wrapped up in this present world that they couldn't hear the voice of the preacher saying judgment's coming. Get ready. You know, it's insanity. It is absolutely insanity to be lost when God is going through such great lengths to save you. You realize all that God's doing to save souls? He's placing you upon somebody's heart to pray for you. And in the midnight hour when you're having a good time and you're enjoying life, there's somebody somewhere down on their knees praying and crying and interceding and you can't hear the voice of those prayers because your ears are tuned in to the things of this world. And if then that's not enough. There's somebody that's missing meals and fasting over you. But you can't hear the voice of God because you're so tuned in to the things of this world. And if that's not enough, there's people coming to you encouraging you saying, hey, come on, get in the church. Get ready while you still got time. Make things right with God, but you're too busy in the things of the world that you can't get it right. You better hear me today. God is doing everything he can to reach for you. How many times do you think he's going to allow you just to push him away and shrug him off? Boy, he finally says, okay, if that's the way you want it. As a matter of fact, the word of the Lord says, I've called you, and I've called you, and I've called you. He said, but you would not listen. He said, because you would not listen. He said, when your trouble comes, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. It's a terrible day when God begins to laugh. God only has to call you one time. And after that, every time He calls you, it's just mercy and grace. God is calling us right now. There's a call this morning to this generation to seek the face of God like you've never sought it before. There's an urgency in the Spirit this morning. The Spirit of God is calling to backsliders and sinners this morning. Are you?
Are you listening? Are you hearing? I can't even imagine how God must feel. Knowing the judgment and the trouble that's coming on this generation. As his voice is calling and his spirit is reaching. He's trying his best to pull people from the flames that are ahead. He's trying his best to pull people from the trouble that's spoken of in the book of Revelation that's going to come on this earth. He's trying his best to pull people from the fear and the calamity that's going to come upon this earth when war breaks out upon this generation like it's never seen before. Where the Bible says that the blood in the valley of of Armageddon is going to be to the bridle of the horse's bit. There's going to be so many bodies that are going to be dead and stacked up. And God is trying to spare souls in this generation from that kind of chaos and he's reaching and he's calling and he's putting an urgency in the church and he's putting an urgency in people that have their ear tuned to the spirit to pray like they've never prayed before. He put an urgency in the spirit of the pastor of this congregation that said, hey, let's put the names of our loved ones in this box because if there's ever been an hour to pray for them, we gotta pray for them like there's never been before because there's judgment coming to this generation. There's trouble coming to this generation what heartache it must be for God when he's doing all that just to be pushed off and pushed off no wonder Jesus stood before Jerusalem and the Bible says he wept because he said oh Jerusalem oh Jerusalem how oft would I have gathered you as a hen would her chicks but you would not listen And he stood there and he saw the judgment coming. There's a call here this morning. You have the choice this morning. God spoke to Abraham and he said, Abraham, I'm fixing to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And the spirit of intercession rose up in Abraham and he said, God, if I can just find 50, will you not destroy it? And God said, yeah, if you can find 50. And the sad thing is, is God, Abraham couldn't find 50. Then he said, what about 40? And he couldn't find 40. 30 and 10 and 5 until finally it's Abraham I'm just going to get your family out of there and even when the angels of God came to deliver Lot and his family even when the wickedness of that city was so bold that it wanted to reach and grab a hold of the angels and do wickedness with those angels that look like men. And them angels had to smite the men of the city with blindness to get them out of there. But they had thought there was still something in the heart of Lot's wife that loved wickedness more than she loved deliverance. And the Bible says that as the angels of the Lord delivered them out of the city and was leading them to a place of safety, after the Lord said, whatever you do, don't turn back, she turned around to look at Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says that she was turned to a pillar of salt. You know, it's something that grieves me to think that there's a possibility because there are people near to me that possibly love the things of this world so much that even when the hand of God comes to deliver them, they love the world so much they're going to be destroyed.
There's going to be families that are going to be split when the trumpet sounds. Because the Bible says there's going to be two in the bed and one's going to be taken. One's going to be left. There's going to be two in the field working together and one's going to be taken. And one's going to be left. But it don't have to be that way. Because God's calling this morning. As we all stand together. Where are you at in God today? If the trumpet sounds today, where are you at? If before midnight tonight a tragedy were to happen in your life and you were to stand before God on judgment day, where would you be found this morning? Because the word of the Lord spoke to one and says you've been weighed in the balances and you're found wanting. If God were to begin to examine your life this morning, would you be ready? If the trumpet was to sound in the next few moments, would you make it? The Bible says, let a man examine himself. The Spirit of God is calling to you this morning. Is the lifestyle you're living worth missing heaven open over? Is the lifestyle you're living worth going to hell over? Is that habit that you're hanging on to this morning worth going to hell over? Is that stubbornness in your spirit today worth you going to hell over? You can't have it your way. If you're going to go to heaven, Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. Jesus said, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Peter, on the day of Pentecost, preached, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission or the washing away of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and to your children and to all those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Brother Irby, I intend to live for God one day. I intend on, after I have my fun in the world, I intend on getting it right. But time is running out on your good intentions. The clock of eternity is quickly ticking on you, sir. It's quickly ticking, ma'am. God is calling you this morning in mercy and grace. But if you won't receive mercy and grace, if you won't allow an opportunity for the blood to cover your sins and turn you around and transform and change you, then the only thing that you leave God to is judgment. And He will bring judgment. He is a God of mercy. He is a God of grace. But on the other hand, He's a God of judgment. If you don't believe that, why don't you ask Sodom and Gomorrah? If you don't believe that, why don't you ask the generation of Noah? You say, well, Brother Irby, I just can't believe that God would destroy that many people. After all, He's a God of mercy and grace. He is, but didn't He destroy the world one time already with water? And He said, this time it's not going to be with water. He said, the face of this earth is going to melt with a fervent heat. There's going to be hell fire and brimstone that's going to fall from the heavens and consume this earth where will you be found there's an escape plan this morning that God has put in place that it don't have to be that way he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying this morning God is calling this morning
unplug your ears and hear today. God is calling this morning, is everything right in your life? God is calling this morning that we would humbly come before Him with a spirit of repentance and make sure everything is right in our life today. God is calling us to pray like we've never prayed before. God is calling us to a spirit of holiness without which the word of the Lord said, no man shall see the Lord. God is calling us this morning to make our way through the throne of mercy and grace. Hallelujah and humble bow before him and put our life in his hands you can't live any old way you want to live and make it to heaven you've got to live according to the word of God you've got to live a life of holiness unto the Lord you've got to walk the way God wants you to walk and talk the way God wants you to talk you can't do it your way and make it into heaven it's got to be God's way it's either God's way or no way hallelujah The sad thing is, is there's going to be people in this world that were so close to being saved. Just like King Agrippa. When Paul witnessed and testified to him and he told Paul, Paul, thou almost persuaded me to be a Christian. But the sad thing is, is he wasn't persuaded. And now he's going to spend eternity in hell. I almost wish sometimes that just for a moment's time, God would open our ears to the screams and the cries of hell. Just for a moment. That if you won't hear the voice of God calling, that just for a moment he would let you hear the voices screaming out from hell. That just for a moment he would let you feel the darkness that they feel in hell. So if there's nothing else in this world that would cause you to live for God, at least the fear of hell would. But that's the problem is because people in this generation have never experienced hell. They don't fear hell. They've got fear of so many things in this world. There are people that fear spiders and fear snakes and fear clowns. And, but they don't have sense enough to fear hell. They don't have sense enough to fear a place that the Bible says is going to be outer darkness. And there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Where the flames are going to burn hot, but you'll never be consumed. And the worm will eat your flesh, but you'll never die. But God is calling this morning. And you don't have to go to hell today. But if you don't repent, you will. If you don't allow the mercy and grace of God to operate in your life and change you, then judgment's coming to you.